All right. I guess we can go with this camera angle. Let me just get comfy a little bit. Okay. All right, you're asleep, which is good. Makes life a little easier. All right. Good morning, everyone. Today is November the 10th, 2017, and I'm going to be doing the voiceover for my next top 12 favorite Christmas specials. I guess this is... Sorry, I'm adjusting the camera. I suppose this is part one of the behind the scenes for December. Uh, we got a lot of stuff this month. Hopefully I'm going to get to it all. Um, I'm going to try not to say... Um, basically in these behind the scenes I'm going to try not to mention um, my the next uh, thing I'm going to record in case I have to scrap that video like I did in October because in my October behind the scenes I kept mentioning Top 7 Masters of Darkness and then I couldn't do it. Um, this is not a flattering angle on me. I just realized maybe it's just the camera and the shadows. Maybe here. Does this help? No, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, I think that's actually just the shadows. I don't know. Maybe. The camera adds like 10 pounds, which is not good, but it probably doesn't. Well, <coughs> when did that phrase get invented? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be doing the voiceover for this. Um, like I said, it's November the 10th, so it's very early on in... Um, very early on in November, so, but with how many videos I want to do this for, for December, um, I might as well just get started right now. I already have this script done, so let's just get right to it. So, here we go. I'm only going to be doing the voiceover right now. I'll probably do, uh, probably like next week or something, I'll do like the live clips. I don't know. We'll see. So, yeah. Oh, alrighty, here we go. Freaking uh, burping. Can't stop burping. I just realized my hair is all like. That's better. It's like a giant part in my hair I didn't even realize was there. Alright. Well, guys, it's December, and the Christmas season is in full force. Last year, I... Last year, I made a video about my top 12 favorite Christmas specials, but there are so many more that I want to talk about. So many more, that's a weird... I don't know. I guess it's not that weird, but... Last year, I made a video on my... Last year, I made a video on my top... Last year, I made a video about my top 12 favorite Christmas specials. But there are so many more I want to talk about. I'm trying to... I'm trying to find a different way of, like... Or a different inflection I can do for this line, because... This is exactly how I started my Caligari review. I was like, last year, I reviewed Nosferatu, A Symphony of Horror. Well, this is basically... Are you snoring? That's not going to catch on the audio, is it? I don't think so. I can barely hear that, and I'm going to be talking over it, so I think it'll be all right. As long as he doesn't get too loud. Should have brought a brush over here. Oh, well. And the Christmas season is in full force. Last year, I made a video on my top 12 favorite Christmas specials, but there are so many more I want to talk about. Last year, I made a video about my top 12 favorite Christmas specials, but there are so many more I want to talk about. Freaking snoring dog. Last year, I made a video about my top 12 favorite Christmas specials, but there are so many more I want to talk about. Alright, that should do. So I thought, why not make another video? 
Now, I haven't actually seen 12 more Christmas specials since the, the, since in the past year. Is that a bird? That has to be a bird. All right. Now, I haven't actually seen 12 more Christmas specials in the past year. This list is going to be some... Now, I haven't actually seen 12 more Christmas specials in the past year. This list is going to be some specials that were in the running for the first video, plus some random stuff I watch around this time of the year. With that being said, I'm also not going to talk about any specials that were in my original video, which includes the honorable mentions, even though they would fit between this list and the first. Everything is making noises. Birds. You. I don't know. Still not totally on board with this angle. My eyes are messing up now. I don't know. It's just not a very flattering angle. We're going to try. We're not going to do this angle again, I think, uh, for the other recordings. So. All right. Now, I haven't actually seen 12 more Christmas specials in the past year. This list is going to be some specials that were in the running for the first video, plus some random stuff I watch around this time of the year. With that being said, I'm also not going to talk about any specials that were in my original video, which includes the honorable mentions, even though they would fit between this list and the first. That was pretty good. Let's not waste any more time. These are my next top 12 favorite Christmas specials. Ah, doing a countdown again. It's been a while. I guess it's Ed and Eddie. That was in July. I worked on that one during, in June, so. Number 12. Number 12. Number 12. Number 12. The Polar Express. The Polar Express. The Polar Express. The Polar Express. Yeah, I tried really enunciating that last time. I don't think that works, though. Alright. I'm going to quickly read through this before I actually give a take. Based on the classic book of the same name, The Polar Express is about a train that picks up kids on Christmas Eve and takes them to meet Santa. Sounds really bad when you say it like that, but the movie doesn't go that route. He's twitching. He's, he's twitching over there, like his eyes are twitching. He's twitching! He must be chasing rabbits in his sleep. If he does, I'm going to have to shut this off for a little bit. I'll just... I'll keep it... I'll, we'll just cut to when he stops, but I'm sure he'll be fine. The reason this movie is low on the list is it's not really great. Is that it's really not great. The animation can be nice to look at, even if it's a little strange. The plot is okay, making believing in Santa more of a challenge of faith. And the acting is decent, but you really only... <clears throat> and the acting is decent, but you really only... The acting is decent, but really you're only going to remember Tom Hanks as the conductor and the kid that sounds like Mandark. Okay, time for a story. When I was in second grade, we watched a version of this in the library, and then, alright, we're going to, we'll, because this is a long paragraph, we'll cut it, we'll basically, we'll do these in two parts, so up to where I say, okay, it's time for a story. We'll do that in one take. Based on the book of the same name, the Polar Express is about a train that picks up kids on Christmas Eve and takes them to meet Santa. It's a bit of a pause there. I'm going to try to do that again. I really should have water. It's better. For some reason, I don't know why, but pep, because sodas don't normally do this to me, but anytime I'm drinking a soda and trying to do a voiceover, my mouth dries immediately. So, this is a bit tricky. <clears throat> Based, on the book of the same name, 
Based on the classic book of the same name, the Polar Express is about a train that picks up kids on Christmas Eve and takes them to beat Santa. The reason this movie is low on the list is it's not really great. The animation can be nice to look at, even if it's a little strange. The plot is okay, making believing... The plot is okay, making believing in Santa more of a challenge of faith. And the acting is decent, but really you're only going to remember Tom Hanks as the conductor and the kid that sounds like Mandark. Am I going too fast? Maybe I need to slow that down a bit. One problem I can kind of have in editing is that I'm talking so fast in the voiceover that I don't, like, sometimes there's not enough, there's not enough time for a clip to just sort of sit and resonate. Um, that might not make any sense to you, but if you're an editor, if you do these kinds of videos, you'll understand that. Um, one thing that I try to, one thing that's a bit tricky is when a clip like, sometimes a voiceover uh, will actually be a little too long. And um, basically when I'm putting in footage later, uh, basically like right at the end before I cut to a different clip, in that clip it cuts to a different like camera angle or something. So if it cuts, basically you get this nice camera angle that you, you know, you're used to, you, you can see it. When it changes it, you get time to adjust to the new camera angle and then it switches to a new camera angle and then I immediately cut to another scene that's a bit of a problem in editing and I have to try to cut out that camera change at the end of the clip and I just gotta try to fix it basically. I, I hope that made some semblance of sense. Um, it might not have. Um, we're 12 minutes into this video and I'm only on number 12 this is going to be a long one, a long behind the scenes. It'd be amazing if we got up to two hours on this one. Maybe. I got a bunch of videos that I'm planning. So, technically this should only be the behind the scenes of four videos, but I don't know. I'm not going to tell you what those are um, in case I can't do those. Hopefully I will. Let's try this again. Based on the classic book of the same name, I don't like that. Based on the classic book of the same name, the Polar Express is about a train that picks up kids on Christmas Eve. Based on the classic book of the same name, the Polar Express is about a train that picks up kids on Christmas Eve and takes them to meet Santa. Which sounds really bad when you say it like that, but the movie doesn't go that route. The reason this movie is low on the list is it's not really great. The animation can be nice to look at, even if it's a little strange with the motion capture. The plot is okay, making believing the plot is okay, making believing in Santa more of a challenge of faith. And the acting is decent, but really you're only gonna remember Tom Hanks as the conductor and the kid that sounds like Mandark. It's true with that line. Like that's the only two memorable characters. Like there's the kid and there's the black girl, and it's like kind of memorable. Kind of not. I don't remember any of their lines. I at least remember, like, Mandark's lines and Tom Hanks. All right. We're going to try that line one more time. Based on the classic book of the same name, the Polar Express is about a train that picks up kids on Christmas Eve and takes them to meet Santa. Which sounds really bad when you say it like that, but the movie doesn't go that route. The reason this movie is low on the list is it's not really great. The animation can be nice to look at, even if the motion capture is a little strange. The plot is okay, making believing in Santa more of a challenge of faith. And the acting is decent, but really you're only going to remember Tom Hanks as the conductor and the kid that sounds like Mandark. Okay, time for a story. When I was in second grade, we watched a version of this in the library. And when we went back to... I should like actually like read this. That's another tip if you're doing a voiceover. Be sure you read over what you're about to voice before you actually voice it. So that, you know, words don't trip you up while you're, because it's not your first time reading through it. So, you can do that. When I was in second grade, we watched a version of this in the library. And when we went back to class, there was a bag of bells from the movie. And it smelled like reindeer. 
even if no one in that southern school had smelled a reindeer, let alone seen one. I'm going to change that a bit. Even if no one in that southern school knew what a reindeer smelled like. Um, okay. But we were blown away because Santa came and gave us a present. Because of this, this movie holds a special place in my heart. Do I believe in Santa? Well, I'd have to ring the bell to see if I hear it. Ah, how touching. And he's not snoring anymore. Yay. Okay. This is actually like, it's, uh, it's Christmas. Christmas gets a little schmoopy like that. Schmoopy. It's a stupid word. I don't even know if I'm using schmoopy correctly. All right. When I was in second grade, we watched a version of this in the library. And when we went back to class, there was a bag of bells from the movie, and it smelled like reindeer. Even if no one in that southern school knew what a reindeer smelled like. But we were blown away because Santa came and gave us a present. Because of this, this movie holds a special place in my heart. Do I believe in Santa? Well, I'd have to ring the bell and see if I hear it. One more time. This is actually a true story. <laughs> it's a true story. I... It, the thing is, the reason I say a version of this is because it's not actually this version of the movie. It was a 2D... It wasn't even like an animated... It was more of just like a storybook. Like it showed pictures and told the story. It wasn't really a movie or anything. But, but still, I like the movie. So. When I was in second grade, it was second grade, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> it's like, I gotta get the grade right. Second grade, that was so long ago for me. When I was in second grade, we watched a version of this in the library, and when we went back to class, there was a bag of bells from the movie, and it smelled like reindeer. Don't ask how any kid from that southern school knew what a reindeer smelled like. Anyway, we were blown away because Santa came and gave us a present. Because of this, this movie holds a special place in my heart. Do I believe in Santa? Well, I'd have to ring the bell to see if I hear it. I'm going to try that one more time. When I was in second grade, we watched a version of this in the library. And when we went back to class, there was a bag of bells from the movie. And it smelled like reindeer. Not exactly sure how anyone in that southern school knew what a reindeer smelled like, but anyway, we were blown away because Santa came and gave us a present. Because of this, this movie holds a special place in my heart. Do I believe in Santa? Well, I'd have to ring the bell to see if I hear it. Alright, next. 18 minutes, and I just got through number 12. All right, I'm going to try to speed things up a bit. i got to stop talking to you guys. You guys are distracting me. No, I'm kidding. Is my face abnormally red today? I don't know, maybe it's just the camera. Number 11. Number 11. Number 11. Number 11. Home Alone. Home alone. Home alone. Home alone. The McAllister family is. Pre oh, I should actually like read through this. The McAllister family is preparing for a Christmas trip to Paris when they accidentally leave the youngest child, Kevin, at home, alone, at home alone. The rest of the film is the almost psychotic mother trying to get home to Kevin while Kevin just enjoys being alone. That is until his house is going to be robbed by Joe Pesci and. and is it Pesci? Yeah going to be robbed by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. Kevin then sets traps around the house, and it's pretty funny. After the police arrest the criminals, Mrs. Mrs. McAllister gets home, and all's well that ends well. I know many people consider this a great classic, but I don't think I would go that far. Don't get me wrong, I like the film, but it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. I thought the part where the burglars were trying to get in was the whole movie, but it's really just the last 15 minutes. It's not that great, but maybe if I saw it as a kid, I'd love it just like everyone else. 
This is not my best written one. The McAllister family is preparing for a Christmas trip to Paris when they accidentally leave their youngest child, Kevin, at home alone. The rest of the film is the almost psychotic mother trying to get home to Kevin while Kevin just enjoys being alone. That is, until his house is going to be robbed by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. Kevin then sets traps around the house. Kevin then sets Kevin then s Kevin then sets traps around the house, and it's pretty funny. After the police arrest the criminals, Mrs. McAllister gets home, and all's well that ends well. I know many people consider this a great classic, but I don't think I would go that far. Don't get me wrong, I like the film, but it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. I thought the part where the burglars were trying to get in was the whole movie, but it's really just the last 15 minutes. It's not that great, but maybe if I saw it as a kid, I'd love it just like everyone else. Right. I'm going to try that again. The McAllister, fam the McAllister family is preparing for a Christmas trip to Paris when they accidentally leave the youngest child, Kevin, at home alone. The rest of the film is the almost psychotic mother trying to get home to Kevin while Kevin just enjoys being alone. That is, until his house is going to be robbed by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. Kevin then sets traps around the, the, the... I don't know why I can't say this sentence. Kevin then sets traps around the house, and it's pretty funny. After the police arrest the criminals, Mrs. McAllister... After the police arrest the criminals, Mrs. McAllister gets home, and all's well that ends well. I know many people consider this a great classic, but I don't think I would go that far. Don't get me wrong, I like the film, but it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. I thought the part where the burglars were trying to get in was the whole movie, but really it's just the last 15 minutes. It's not that great, but maybe if I saw it as a kid, I'd love it just like everyone else. Alright, um, I think I can work with those two, so we'll move on. That requires moving the tripod and getting up, and I'm lazy, so yeah, I'll be fine. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Get Santa. Get Santa. Get Santa. Has anyone heard of this? Anyone? That's what I thought. I was browsing Netflix last Christmas and came across a small British film about saving Santa. The plot is just that. Santa winds up in Britain and needs help from Steve and his son Tom to find his reindeer and return to Lapland in time for Christmas. The hell is Lapland? During this, Santa is imprisoned and Steve tries to believe in Santa again. It's not the greatest plot in the world, but it's decent enough. Add in the right around a... Add in the right amount of Christmas tree. I can't. You get a heartwarming special. Even when I'm just reading it verbatim, I can't do it. Oh, yeah, and that's a burp. <laughs> that was probably weird. This is, I'm just talking. To... <sighs> this has been a weird recording session. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I was browsing Netflix last Christmas and came across a small British film about saving Santa. The plot is just that. Santa winds up in Britain and needs the help of son, son. Santa winds up in Britain and needs the help of Steve and his son Tom to find his reindeer and return to Lapland in time for Christmas. During this, Santa is imprisoned and Steve tries to believe in Santa again. It's not the greatest plot in the world, but it's decent enough. Add in the right amount of Christmas cheer, and you get a heartwarming special. Yeah, I don't say much about this one, but... I don't know, it was so weird, it was just browsing Netflix, like, Get Santa. What kind of title is that? And I watched it, and I was like, well, that was okay. That was nice. It was fun. And it was like, that's a horrible title. It's like, whoever named that movie, it's like... We need to get rid of them. It's like, I don't know. 
I was browsing Netflix last Christmas and came across a small British film about saving Santa. The plot is just that. Santa winds up in Britain and needs the help of Steve and his son Tom to find his reindeer and return to Lapland in time for Christmas. The hell is Lapland? During this, Santa is imprisoned and Steve tries to believe in Santa again. It's not the greatest plot in the world, but it's decent enough. Add in the right amount of Christmas cheer and you get a heartwarming special. I think that'll work. Ha! Screw you, clock. You didn't interrupt the take. That one did, though. It got the better of me. Oh, well. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. This movie is so weird. I was originally going to put this in the honorable mentions of the first video, but I forgot. Oops. It's Christmas Eve in Cityville when the elderly owner of a general store is hit by Santa's sleigh. The only person to see this is her grandson, Jank Jank. Dude, Jank. The only person to see this is her grandson, Jake Spanken. Spank. Oh, that's going to be hard to say. Jake, Jake Spankenheimer. Ha. That sounds like a vocal warm-up. Spankenheimer. And he and his family go to see if he's telling the truth. But when they go outside, Grandma is nowhere to be seen. After being declared missing, Austin Bucks arrives to buy the store as it's the last thing in town he doesn't own. Jake wants to stop him but and begins his search for Santa to find his grandma. It's so goofy. I loved this as a kid. I even had the decoration that played the song. But this isn't a masterpiece. However, much like Get Santa, there's just the right amount of Christmas that makes this worth watching. Check it out and see what happened to Grandma. Oh boy. This movie is so weird. This movie is so weird. I was originally going to put this in the honorable mentions of my first video, but I forgot. Oops. It's Christmas Eve in Cityville when the elderly owner of a general store is hit by Santa's sleigh. The only person to see this is her grandson, Jake Spankenheimer, and he and his family go to see if he's telling the truth. But when they go outside, Grandma is nowhere to be seen. After being declared missing, Austin Bucks arrives to buy the store as it's the last thing in town that he doesn't own. Jake wants to stop him and begins his search for Santa to find his grandmother. It's so goofy. I love this as a kid. I even had a decoration that played the song. But this isn't a masterpiece. Now with that being said, this movie is not a masterpiece. But much like Get Santa, it's the right amount of Christmas... Blech. It's the right amount of Christmas that makes this worth watching. Check it out and see what happens to Grandma. Alright, we're going to do that again. This movie is so weird. This movie is so weird. I was originally going to put this in the honorable mentions of my first video, but I forgot. Oops. It's Christmas Eve in Cityville when the elderly owner of a general store is hit by Santa's sleigh. The only person to see this is her grandson, Jake Spankenheimer, and he and his family go to see if he's telling the truth. But when they go outside, Grandma is nowhere to be seen. After being declared missing, Austin Bucks arrives to buy the, the. After being declared missing, Austin Bucks arrives at the store. Ugh. After being declared missing, Austin Bucks arrives to buy the store as it's the last thing in town he doesn't own. Jake wants to stop him and begins his search for Sama. Sama. Jake wants to stop him and begins his search for Santa in order to find his grandmother. It's so goofy. But I love this as a kid. I even had a decoration that played the song. Now, this is not a masterpiece. Far from it. But, much like Get Santa, there's the right amount of Christmas that makes it worse. Bleh. But, much like Get Santa, there's just the right amount of Christmas that makes it worth watching. Check it out and see what happened to Grandma. 29 min 30 minutes, really, now.
30 minutes. 30 minutes and I'm only on number 8. Good grief, why am I taking this long? <sighs> number 8. Number 8. Number 8. Number 8. AVGN number 17, Bible Games. AVGN episode 17, Bible Games. AVGN, a, 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 a. The Angry Video Game Nerd, episode 17, Bible Games. Angry Video Game Nerd, number 17, Bible Games. Now we get to the good stuff. Ugh, excuse me. All right. Now we get to the good stuff. The angry video game nerd spends his Christmas playing Nintendo games based on stories from the Bible. It goes about as well as you would expect. None of the games are good, but they're so strange that they're kind of enjoyable. This was the nerd's first Christmas special, and it perfectly captures what it's like to play odd games on Christmas. There's no music except from the games, no explosions or battles like in future nerd episodes, just a guy yelling at games. It's almost like the nerd is our older brother, baffled by the games and cursing at them for their strangeness. Though, with all that beer, he's more like our drunk uncle. Drunkle. Gotta get some water. And I'm gonna start a new recording too. So, all right, we're back. Um, decided to change the camera angle a little bit. Uh, just kind of reposition myself. Got some water. And now we are ready to keep going. All right. Now we get to the good stuff. The angry video game nerd spends his Christmas playing Nintendo games based on stories from the Bible. It goes about as well as you would expect. None of the games are good, but they're so strange that they're kind of enjoyable. This was the nerd's first Christmas special, and it perfectly captures what it's like to play odd games on Christmas. There's no music except for the games. No explosions or battles like in future nerd episodes. Just a guy yelling at games. It's almost like the nerd is our older brother baffled by the games and cursing at them for their strangeness. Though, with all that beer, he's more like our drunk uncle. Oh. Alrighty. Oh, crack every knuckle in my hand. Oh. Hands, really. I'm gonna get some pillows over here just to... Alright. Um, I think those two are good. Those takes are good. Let's move on. Number seven. Number seven. Number seven. Nostalgia Critic. The worst Christmas special ever. Nostalgia Critic. The worst Christmas special ever. Nostalgia Critic. The worst Christmas special ever. Nostalgia Critic, the worst Christmas special ever. Oi. Oi, the throat's really going. Not even a year after leaving the plot hole, the NC witnesses the worst of Christmas. Aside from Black Friday. The special... The special, The Christmas Tree, is a 45-minute, poorly animated, acted, written, and anything else that could go into the... Is a 45-minute, poorly animated, acted, written, and anything else that could go into the art of cinema special. After ranting about it, Critic spends a long time telling about how... Uh, telling about how Christmas is important and the Christmas tree fails to represent the holiday. This is the NC at his finest. He may have his one-liners, give his opinions and snarky comments, but when it comes to Christmas, he gets serious. He makes sure that, 
He makes sure that Christmas is given what it deserves. The normal smartass we all love is replaced with the, with the true caring person that Christmas is about. It may not be his funniest review, though it's a contender, but it's one of his most important. Whew, this is, like, oddly worded. Boy, I'm close, aren't I? I guess I can move this back a bit. Move that back so I'm not, like, right in your face. So, all right. Not even a year after leaving the plot hole, the NC witnesses the... Not even a year... <clears throat> oh, my throat. Should have started with water. Right. Not even a year after leaving the plot hole, the NC witnesses the worst of Christmas, aside from Black Friday. The special, The Christmas Tree, is a 45 minute poorly animated, acted, written, and anything else that could go into the art of cinema special. After ranting about it, critic spends a long time telling about how Christmas is important, and the Christmas tree fails to represent the holiday. This is the NC at his finest. He may have his one-liners, give his opinions and snarky comments, but, it w bleh. but when it comes to Christmas, he gets serious. He makes sure that Christmas is given what it deserves. The normal smartass we all love is replaced with a... Bleh. The normal smartass we all love is replaced with the true caring person that Christmas is all about. It may not be his funniest review, though it is a contender. It may not be his It may not be his funniest review, though it is a contender, but it's one of his most important. Not even a year after leaving the plot hole, the NC witnesses the worst of Christmas, aside from Black Friday. The special, The Christmas Tree, is a 45-minute poorly animated acted, written and anything else that could go into the art of cinema special. After ranting about it, Critic spends a long time telling about how Christmas is important and the Christmas tree fails to represent the holiday. This is the NC at his finest. He may have his one-liners, give his opinions and snarky comments, but when it comes to Christmas, he gets serious. He makes sure that Christmas is given what it deserves. The normal smartass we all love is replaced with a true caring person that Christmas is all about. It may not be his funniest review, though it is a contender. Blech. It may not be his funniest review, though it is a contender. It is one of his most important. It may not be his funniest review, though it is a contender. But it is his most important. Yeah, I don't, you know, that wording isn't quite right. The whole thing is like weirdly worded, but whatever. Moving on. I think I can, I think I can have enough good takes out of that. Number six. Number six. Number six. Number six. Game Grumps. Silent Hill Shattered Memories. More water. Ugh. <sighs> Game Grumps, Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Game Grumps, Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Okay, last of the internet videos. The Game Grumps play through a scary gr bleh, gream. Okay, last internet videos. The Game Grumps play through a scary game for Christmas in January. This is one of the only horror games that I love watching. I hate jump scares, but they're limited in this. Uh, I hate jump scares, but they're limited in this series. This is just Aaron and Danny trying to find their daughter and laughing all the way. This always puts me in a Christmas spirit, having fun with friends and family and the cold, snowy environment the Grumps trek through. It's one of my favorites. Give it a watch and have a Christmas scare. Alright, last internet videos. The Game Grumps play through a scary game for Christmas in January. This is one of the only horror games that I love watching. Look, I... I hate jump scares, but they are limited in this series. 
This is just Aaron and Danny trying to find their daughter and laughing all the way. This always puts me in a Christmas spirit. Having fun with friends and family and the cold, snowy environment the Grumps trek through. It's one of my favorites. Give it a watch and have a Christmas scare. We're going to do that one more time. Okay, last internet video. The Game Grumps play through a scary... Gr bleh. The Game Grumps play through a scary game for Christmas in January. This is one of the only horror games that I love watching. I hate jump scares, but they're limited in this series. This is just Aaron and Danny trying to find their daughter and laughing all the way. This always puts me in the Christmas spirit. Having fun with friends and family and the cold, snowy environment that the Grumps trek through. It's one of my favorites. Give it a watch and have a Christmas scare. Oh crap, I actually have to sing in this next one. Crap, I didn't prepare for this. Alright, a little behind the scenes. I haven't, I haven't set this up yet because I haven't talked about this one. I haven't recorded this one yet, but in this next one I say that I can I know all the lyrics to this song. All but one. And so I guess backstage look, I'm going to have to tell you I'm going to have to cheat a little bit. I'm actually going to have to look up the words so I can get the one line I'm missing. It's it's like the second line in the entire song, but I... Ugh. And the problem is, it's November. It's early in November, so the commercial hasn't played yet. So, yeah. Number five. Number five. I feel like my mouth and my throat are getting more dry. That's all right. Number five. Number five. <coughs> Number five. B.C. Clark's Anniversary Sale. B.C. Clark's Anniversary Sale. B.C. Clark's Anniversary Sale. Oh, I guess I am going to do... I guess that's going to be more live action, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I may still try to sing it here. I don't know. We'll see. I don't often talk about being from Oklahoma because I don't consider myself an Oki. For those of you that don't know, Oki is the term for proud Oklahoman. But one thing I always take pride in is knowing the lyrics to B.C. Clark's Anniversary Sale. Watch. Yeah, and I'm going to have to cheat it. Yeah, I'm going to have to look up the one line. I hate that I have to do that. But I know everything else. I know everything else. On top of that, the animation is perfect. On top of what? I didn't... Oh, crap. On top of that... Wait, what? That didn't... That didn't have... I guess I'll just... The animation is perfect. Yeah, it's choppy and 50 years old, but it captures the cool colors of the Christmas season. It's stuck in the heads of anyone who spent more than one Christmas in the decently average state of Oklahoma. That is poorly written. Holy crap. Everyone in Oklahoma looks forward to seeing that choppy 50-year-old animation. Everyone in Oklahoma... The song isn't the only thing we look forward to in Oklahoma. We also look forward to that choppy 50-year-old animation that truly captures the cool colors of the Christmas season. It's stuck in the heads of anyone who has spent more than one Christmas in the decently average state of Oklahoma. Apologies to all my Oklahoma viewers, if there are any. I don't know. Um, yeah, you guys might like the state. I'm not a fan. I'd move if I could. Nobody try to get where I live out of this. All right. All right. Um, all right, I'm going to get the lyric. 
It's got to be online, right? There better be lyrics here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Featured nationally on NBC Nightly News. Really? That's cool. I guess. No, I want the lyrics. Here we go. Because it's the gift that'll live and li I was so, I was close, darn it. All right. Jewelry is the gift to give, cause it's the gift that'll live and live. So give the gift you know can't fail from B.C. Clark's anniversary sale. Most sales are after Christmas, but Clark's is just before. Most everything is marked way down, savings you can't ignore. At Oklahoma's oldest jeweler since 1892. So give the gift you know can't fail from B.C. Clark's. Anniversary sale. I don't know if that was the best singing. I don't, I don't know how great a singer I am, but... I don't know why, but I... Should I do that again just for safekeeping? I don't know. I, I'll do it one more time, just in case. Because <laughs> that wasn't even the greatest singing. Freaking hair. Why didn't I get up and get my brush? My hair's just gonna act up today, apparently. Alright. Jewelry is the gift to give, cause it's the gift that'll live and live. So give the gift you know can fail from BC Clark's anniversary sale. Most sales are after Christmas, but Clark's is just before. Most everything is marked way down, savings you can ignore. At Oklahoma's oldest jeweler since 1892. So give the gift you know can't fail from B.C. Clark's anniversary sale. There. So, wow, you're getting to know a lot about me. I can sing, maybe. I guess you're the judge of that, not me. Um, I believe I can sing, and you know the state I'm from. All right. Uh, I'm... Because it's the gift that'll live and live. Well, now I know that. Now I'm going to remember that from when I do the the live recording. If I do it live or if I just do eh, probably live. So. Oh, God, this next one's long. It's so long. Okay, here we go. Number four. Number four. Number four. Number four. Arthur Christmas. Arthur Christmas. Arthur Christmas. I'm going to start by giving credit to the nostalgia critic for drilling it in my head that I needed to see this film. Santa is finishing up another year of delivering presents and his first son is getting ready to take over the position. Upon returning to the North Pole, Santa says he's excited to deliver presents next year to everyone's surprise. His second son, Arthur, then notices that Santa missed one present. The brother doesn't care, and Santa isn't capable of flying the ship on his own, so Arthur and his grandfather hitch up the old reindeer and try to deliver the president... the president... oops... and try to deliver the present before the sun brings forth Christmas Day. This is interesting to watch. Santa has trouble with the new technology, the brother doesn't really care about one child not getting a present on Christmas, and the grandfather just wants to prove that his reindeer can still compete with the new ship, and Arthur just wants to give the child his Christmas present. Each arc is perfect. They all realize that they can learn from one... Now we wait. Because it's the gift that'll live and live... Is that really it? I've, I've, darn it, I was close on that lyric, too. I thought it was, because it's the gift that live, that slip. You know, I was close. I, I think I got it, even. Because it's the gift that live, that's living. Yeah, I was, I was very close. It's 11 o'clock now. I've been doing this for like an hour. Well, less than an hour, but still. It's been a while. 
Here we go. Each arc is perfect. They all realize that they can learn from one another, and each one has advantages to what they do. But in the end, they need to set aside their differences to make sure the kids get the presents. They basically learn the meaning of Christmas, which is strange that this kind of movie is about Santa. Santa is always shown as knowing the meaning of Christmas. But in this one, the old Santa, the current Santa, and the next Santa don't get what it's all about, and only Arthur can show them by doing everything to deliver the present. This film is amazing, and is a new Christmas classic. I'm going to start by giving credit to the Nostalgia Critic for drilling it in my head that I need to see this film. Santa is finishing up another year of delivering presents, and his first son is getting ready to take over the position. However, upon returning to the North Pole, Santa says he's excited to deliver presents next year to everyone's surprise. His second son, Arthur, then notices that Santa missed one present. The brother doesn't care, and Santa isn't capable of flying the ship on his own, so Arthur and his grandfather hitch up the old reindeer and deliver the present before the sun brings forth Christmas Day. This is interesting to watch. Santa has... This is interesting to watch. Santa has trouble with the new technology. The brother doesn't really care about one child not getting a present on Christmas. The grandfather just wants to prove his reindeer can still compete with the new ship. And Arthur just wants to give the child his present. Each arc is perfect. They all realize that they can learn from one another, and each one has advantages. They all realize that they can learn from one another, and each one has advantages to what they do. But in the end, they need to set aside their differences to make sure that the kids get their presents. They basically learn the meaning of Christmas, which is strange that this kind of movie is about Santa. Santa is shown as always knowing the mean. Santa is always shown as knowing the meaning of Christmas. But in this one, All right, I was going to try to just hold that face for a while. Oh my gosh, can you, yeah, you can see that. Can you see, like, right here? That's, that's, that's leftover Halloween decorations that we haven't put up yet. Um, because we're busy and stuff, and so... So yeah, not only is this early in November that I'm recording this, but still got some Halloween stuff. Whew. Santa is always shown as knowing the meaning of Christmas, but in this one, the old Santa, the current Santa, and the next Santa don't get what it's all about. And it's only Arthur that can show them... And only Arthur can show them by doing everything to deliver the present. This film is amazing, and it's a new Christmas classic. Oh, God. Why do these have to be so long? <clears throat> Number three. Number three. Number three. Number three. The Nativity. The Nativity. The Nativity. <coughs> I am really losing it. I'm probably going like, to lose my voice or something. I hope not. I have to review Inhumans and Thor Ragnarok <laughs> this weekend. Again, showing you how early I'm doing this. A Christmas movie about Jesus? Who knew? A Christmas movie about Jesus? Who knew? A Christmas movie about Jesus? Who knew? A man named Joseph just married a girl named Mary. After Mary returns from a trip to see her friends, it's revealed that Mary is pregnant. This brings shame upon her parents and Joseph, who is dreaming of stoning her, until the archangel steps in to tell him that Mary is having the son of God himself, Jesus. Who we're going to retry that one. You know, we're going to retry the entire thing. A man named Joseph just married a girl named Mary. After Mary returns from a trip to see her friends, it's revealed that Mary is pregnant. This brings shame upon her parents and Joseph, who is dreaming of stoning her until the archangel steps in to tell him that Mary is having the Son of God himself, Jesus. <sighs> <clears throat> Meanwhile,
Meanwhile, three wise men have discovered a prophecy about the Son of God and follow the star of Bethlehem to find the boy. They also explain that the star is so bright because it's the alignment of Venus, Jupiter, and another star. Blech. They also explain that the star... Blech. They also explain that the star is so bright because it's the alignment of Venus, Jupiter, and a star. Anyway, while all this is happening, Augustus Caesar decrees that all men in the Roman Empire must return to their ancestral land for the census. Since Joseph is a direct descendant of King David, he travels with Mary to Bethlehem. And it goes where you think it would. Joseph and Mary get to Bethlehem just as Mary goes into labor and they find refuge in a manger. Well, it looks a bit more like a cave, but whatever. They f what are you, kickboxing over there? He's doing like this stuff. It's like, what? And it goes where you think it would. Joseph and Mary get to Bethlehem just as Mary goes into labor and they find refuge in a manger. Well, it looks more like a cave, but whatever. The three wise men arrive and give the newborn king some gifts. Before they arrived, the wise men had a chat with King Herod about the birth of the Messiah, which didn't go over well. Herod orders the murder of all the male babies in Bethlehem, but Joseph is warned of it. Blech. Herod orders the murder of, of all. Blech. Herod orders the murder of all the male babies in Bethlehem, but Joseph is warned of the order in a dream and takes Mary and Jesus to Egypt as the film ends. What can I say about this film? The acting is great. The writing is great. It's just all around great. It's also just a peaceful movie. Yeah, there's orders to kill babies, but you know what I mean. Every other film about Jesus is about his death and how cruel the Jews and the Romans were, but this shows his humble beginnings. It doesn't show Jesus as any point... Blech. It doesn't show Jesus as... It doesn't so... Oh, I'm losing it. <sighs> It doesn't show Jesus as the It doesn't show It doesn't show Jesus at any point as an adult, not at his death or any of his teachings. The film doesn't even open by saying this is the birth of the Messiah. It's honestly not about him. It's about two people trying to survive in the Roman Empire before the birth of their son. Check it out and see the origins of the best holiday. <sighs> Okay. I can't. It's so long, I can't do that again. All right. I think that's good, though. I think we're good, though. Um, oh, I hope this audio is coming out well. 26 minutes! Good grief, it's taken me an hour just to get this part of the video done. This part, I haven't even done the live action stuff yet. Um, as a side note, Hopefully this audio is coming in well. Hopefully I'm not like too loud and the audio is getting distorted or anything. Um, that actually happened last time I did this video. Um, in the top 12 Christmas specials part 1, I guess. Um, this was before I even had this tripod. But I put the camera basically like right here. And I was sitting in a recliner and I was just doing it in the recliner with the camera just on my laptop. That audio was so distorted, it was so bad, I had, and I basically had to re-record everything, um, and re, I had to redo the entire voiceover, it was horrible, um, and I had to do it quickly, so, yeah, and as you can tell, my voice is starting to go, so, so yeah, that's a bit of trivia for the, the other video, Who boy, here we go. Number two. Number two. Number two. Static shock, frozen out. Static shock, frozen out. Static shock, frozen out. Static shock, frozen out. It's December in the city of Dakota, and its resident superhero, the it's December in the city of Dakota, and the resident superhero Static, a.k.a. Virgil Hawkins, is at a Hanukkah party when the power goes out. Upon reaching the power plant, 
Static sees that it's been completely frozen in ice. Later, when shopping, Virgil discovers that the ice is coming from a girl. The girl sees a family and has a flashback to when her mother died and her stepfather left her alone. Static follows the girl to an abandoned building filled with homeless people. He finds a picture of the He finds a picture of the girl and her mother and takes it to Reverend Anderson who runs a homeless outreach program. The Reverend tells Static about the girl's past and that her name is Maureen. Static is then attacked at ugh. Static is then attacked at a tree lighting ceremony by Maureen, aka Permafrost. Permafrost is attacking to get her picture back, and Static obliges, saying that he understands her pain as he also lost his mother. He convinces Maureen to see Reverend Anderson and get some help. The episode ends with Virgil, Richie, and their families at the ugh. The episode ends with Virgil, Richie, and their families at a Christmas service that sums up the meaning of Christmas. This episode is amazing. It's not the first time Static Shock has dealt with a serious issue. There were episodes about dyslexia, gun violence, and racism. These aren't perfectly written, but they're pretty good. These aren't perfectly written, but they're pretty good, and this one is no exception. The atmosphere is great, the story is great, the characters are great, it's just all around great and deserves number two. <sighs> We're gonna try that one again. <sighs> We're almost done here. <sighs> all right. It's December in the city of Dakota, and the resident superhero, Static, a.k.a. Virgil Hawkins, is at a Hanukkah party when the power goes out. Upon reaching the power plant, Static sees that it's been completely frozen in ice. Later when shopping, Virgil discovers that the ice is coming from a girl. The girl sees a family and has a flashback to when her mother died and her stepfather left her alone. Static follows the girl to an abandoned building filled with homeless people. He finds a picture of the girl and her mother and takes it to Reverend Anderson, who runs a homeless outreach program. The Reverend tells Static about the girl's past and that her name is Maureen. Static is then attacked at a, Static is then attacked at a tree lighting ceremony by Maureen, a.k.a. Permafrost. Permafrost is attacking to get her picture back and Static obliges, saying that he understands her pain as he also lost his mother. He convinces Maureen to see Reverend Anderson and get some help. The episode ends with Virgil, Richie, and their families at a Christmas service that sums up the meaning of Christmas. This episode is amazing. This is not the first time Static Shock has dealt with a serious issue. This is not the first time... This is not the first time Static Shock has dealt with a serious issue like homeless. Like homeless. That's not a great way of saying that. This is not the first time Static Shock has dealt with a serious issue like homelessness. There were episodes about dyslexia, gun violence, and racism. These aren't perfectly written, but they're pretty good, and this one is no exception. The atmosphere is great, the story is great, the characters are great, it's just all around great, and deserves number two. Almost done. Oh. All right. <sighs> Number one. Number one. Number one. And my number one next favorite Christmas special is... And my number one next favorite Christmas special is... And my number one, next favorite Christmas special is... And my number one, next favorite Christmas special is... National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. After their trip to Wally World, the Griswolds invite their relatives over for Christmas, and it goes about as well as you would expect. In that, nothing goes well. 
The Christmas tree explodes, Clark gets trapped in the attic, Eddie and the family come over, the turkey is ruined, the lights are too bright, Clark is almost arrested, everything that could possibly go wrong. This movie is hilarious, plain and simple. It is jam-packed with comedy and amazing acting. It's amazing how Chevy Chase can play such a pervert with Clark... Blech. It's amazing how Chevy Chase can play such a pervert with Clark, yet still give enough heart to make him a lovable guy. Everything in this movie is perfect, down to the tiniest detail, like the grandparents asleep on the couch or someone just watching a random Christmas special. If you haven't seen this, then check out my number one next favorite Christmas special. Ugh. After their trip to Wally World, the Griswolds invite their relatives over for Christmas and it goes about as well as you would expect. In that, nothing goes well. The Christmas tree explodes, Clark gets trapped in the attic, Eddie and the family come over, the Christmas is... Bleh, the Christmas. The Christmas tree explodes, Clark is trapped in the attic, Eddie and the family come over, the turkey is ruined, the lights are too bright, Clark is almost arrested, everything that could possibly go wrong. This movie is hilarious, plain and simple. It is jam-packed with comedy and amazing acting. It's amazing how Chevy Chase can play such a pervert with Clark, yet still give enough heart to make him a lovable guy. Everything in this movie is perfect, down to the tiniest detail, like the grandparents asleep on the couch, or someone just watching a random Christmas special. If you haven't seen this, then check out my number one next favorite Christmas special. <sighs> We did it. That's it. Holy crap. Oh. Alright, I'm ready to not talk for a little while. Alright, thank you for joining me at this. Um, we are going to move on to something else. I'm not going to tell you. So, yeah. Let's just get moving on to the next video. There should be a next video, hopefully. So, yeah. Okay. So. So, um, I'm going to put the dates for each of these recording sessions in because it's almost a month later from my last recording. I have scrapped two videos since then and I've done a lot of stuff. And as you can see I got a haircut too. Today is December the 4th, 2017 and I'm going to be recording the live content for the next top 12 favorite Christmas specials. Hopefully soon I will be doing stuff with the other video I have planned for this month. Yeah. So. I also just shaved too for this so that I look good. And we're just going to have to go with the lighting. Nothing I can really do about it. So yeah. I guess that'll be the thumbnail, so. Well, guys, it's December. That means the Christmas season is in full force. Well, guys, it's December, and the Christmas season is in full force. Well, guys, it's December, and the Christmas season is in full force. So I thought, why not make another video, as the light changes dramatically. So I thought, why not make another video? So I thought, why not make another video? So 
So I thought, why not make another video? So let's not waste any more time. These are my next top 12 favorite Christmas specials. So let's not waste any more time. These are my next top 12 favorite Christmas specials. Well, let's not waste any more time. These are my next top 12 favorite Christmas specials. Yeah, I'm noticing, well, maybe it's not actually that bad. Sometimes I get these sides kind of uneven, which is, you can really only see if you look straight on, and really only if you're looking. So, generally, if someone sees me from the side, obviously they're not going to see the other side. So, and if you look straight on, it's not, you would have to be looking for it, basically. So. Alright, here we go. Which sounds really bad when you say it like that, but, the, but this movie doesn't go that route. Which sounds really bad when you put it like that, but this movie doesn't go that route. Actually going to... Could just be shadows, but... Try to fix that. Yeah, how are my bangs? Yeah. Alright, that'll work. Luckily, so, recently my hair has been doing weird stuff. Like, right here it'll curl up a bit. And that's been annoying me. You can see that in my uh, Crisis on Earth X video and my uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. video that I did uh, at the beginning of this month. So I just recorded those like a few days ago. So. Alright. Which sounds really bad when you put it like that, but this movie doesn't go that route. Which sounds really bad when you put it like that, but this movie doesn't go that route. Freaking lighting. Which sounds really bad when you put it like that, but this movie doesn't go that route. Which sounds really bad when you put it like that, but luckily the movie doesn't go that route. Okay, it's time for a story. Okay, it's time for a story. Okay, it's time for a story. Luckily, this, this luckily there's not a lot of on-screen time with me. This, I, and I kind of knew that when... I kind of knew that going into this that there wouldn't be a lot of live-action clips of me. Um, but probably in my next review there will be more, so. Has anyone heard of this? Anyone? Yeah, that's what I thought. Has anyone heard of this? Like, anyone? Yeah, that's what I thought. Has anyone heard of this? Like, anyone? Yeah, that's what I thought. Has anyone heard of this? Like, anyone? What the hell is Lapland? What the hell is Lapland? What the hell is Lapland? Oh wow. Oh wow, we're actually almost done. There's only one line left. Good grief, I really did not... I guess, so once I get past number 10, there is no, like, you don't see me visually anymore. That's interesting. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your list in the comments down below. 
I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and December has just begun. Yeah, I wrote that back when I thought this was going to go out on the 3rd. Um, well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear your list in the comments down below. Well, tune in. Tune in. Well, tune in on Christmas Eve as we cover another Christmas special. I'm Alex from Seventh Hour Films. See you then. Yeah, we'll do that. Where we cover. Where we cover another Christmas special. Tune in on Christmas Eve, where we'll cover. Or we'll cover another Christmas special. Where I'll cover a Christmas special from. from the. from Rankin Bass. No, I shouldn't. Should I say Rankin Bass? Well, I mean, Rankin Bass does multiple, but then it makes you think Rudolph, and I'm not doing Rudolph. Alright. Let me see what I can do here. Oh wow, this actually doesn't get in shot. That's kind of nice. Alright, so I'm just I'm revising my last line a little bit. And it does actually help if I write it down so I'll remember it. Okay. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your list in the comments down below. Tune in on Christmas Eve when I'll review the, implem the, the infamously awkward Christmas special Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films. See you guys then. Infam infamously awkward. Oh, of course, I had to give myself a tongue twister. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your list in the comments down below. Tune in on Christmas Eve, where I'll review the infamously awkward Christmas special, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys then. There. That could have gone better. Basically, um, all right, try that again. I will right, make this quick. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, if you don't agree, that's fine. I would love to hear your list in the comment section down below. Well, tune in on Christmas Eve. Blech, I can't do well twice. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your list in the comments down below. Tune in on Christmas Eve, where I'll review the infamously awkward Christmas special, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films. See you guys then. I gotta try not to look down like I've been... Well, here. Just get that out of my lap. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your list in the comment section down below. Well, bleh, can't say well twice. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your list in the comment section down below. 
Tune in on Christmas Eve. God, the light is fluctuating way too much. We can't have that. We can't have too much light fluctuation, so. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your list in the comments section down below. Tune in on Christmas Eve, where I'll review the infamously awkward Christmas special, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I'll see you guys then. Alright, one more for good measure. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your list in the comments down below. Tune in on Christmas Eve, where I'll be reviewing the infamously awkward Christmas special, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films. See you guys then. One more for safety, I know. One more. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. Blech. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's a... Oh, freaking my eye. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I want to hear your list in the comments section down below. With all that being... Oh, I'm completely screwing up. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your list in the comments section down below. Tune in on Christmas Eve, where I'll cover the infamously... Oh, I can't do this anymore. Time... 14 minutes, all right. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your comments. Ugh. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your list in the comments section down below. Tune in on Christmas Eve, where I'll... Ugh, 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 ugh. Oh, I just won. I wanted one more good take. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your com. Mm. Oh, I'm so mad. Well, that's the list. Like I said last year, it's okay if you don't agree. I'd love to hear your list in the comments down below. Tune in on Christmas Eve where I'll be reviewing the infamously awkward Christmas special, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films. See you guys then. Alright, good. Not going to try to do that again. Alright, thank you for joining me. Hopefully our next meeting will be uh, relatively soon. Uh, hopefully. I actually, I haven't even written the script to Santa Claus is Coming to Town yet, so... Um, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I forgot to do the sink. Well, I guess that's the sink. Well, here, we can just do the sink here. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. There we go. It's, uh, it's really cold today, and right now Darby's outside, so I figured take advantage and go ahead and get this shot. This is actually going to start my filming of my review of Santa Claus is Coming to Town. So I figured I'd just start, start with the only outdoor shot, so yeah. I guess I need to do a sink. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Cool. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit and let's basically just do a test run. See how that goes. So I stand like here. 
problem is, it's only so high this camera can go on this tripod, but I think that'll do. probably look at the camera. Boy, it does not go as high as I need it to. I'm, yeah, you can see my breath. I gotta, I'm gonna try to do this as quick as possible. Maybe, can I like fake it and, maybe. Could re-angle it up. Bring the camera. Okay. Okay. We're gonna try this. And my clock is going off. The clock's going off. Darby's barking. Luckily, we're not really gonna need audio here, so I guess I can cut it out, honestly. I need to do a bit more of a smile on that. And this is all assuming that I can even do this shot with the uh, lightning in my eyes. Hopefully I did, otherwise you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about. So, that's about as good as my hair is gonna get, so. couple more and then I'm gonna get out of here. See, I can't squint my eyes too much. Yeah, I can't, I can't do that, so. Not exactly centered, I need to be centered here. All right, we'll do a couple more, a couple more. Gotta be careful, see I wanna look at this to center myself, but I also need to kinda look at the camera, so. Two more. One more. Let me actually get a quick close-up on my eyes. <sighs> this is gonna get awkward.
We may even need this a bit closer to me. My hair. See me here is my hair unnaturally dark this morning. It must just be the lighting, but let me actually move this back to about where my face would be. And we'll just do I guess just a close-up. Alright, I can't look away from the camera. just naturally move away from things. I, I can't keep eye contact or anything. It's hard for me, so. I hope you guys can even hear me. I'm like whispering and stuff. It's like I didn't even realize. Sorry about that, so. <laughs> Smile makes me look like I'm stoned. Darby really wants in, and it's cold, so see you at the next <sighs> And here we go again, attempting to film. Had a little difficulty, but we're okay. We're all okay now. Now I'm just going to have to work for my hair. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and do a... Sync test. Are you sync? Whatever. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Alrighty, here we go. Let me look over my line. Hey guys, it's Alex from Seventh Hour Films, and today I'm going to review a Christmas special that is beloved by many and looked upon by everyone else as one of the odd ones. This is Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films, and today I'm going, yeah, you know what, let me add in the Christmas Eve part. Oh yeah, I'm hungry. Alright. Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films. There. Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films. Merry Christmas Eve. Today I'm going to be looking at a Christmas special that is beloved by many, but looked upon by everyone else as one of the odd ones. This is Santa Claus It's Coming to Town. Alright, try that again. Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films. Uh. Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films. Merry Christmas Eve. Today I'm going to be looking at a Christmas special that is beloved by many, but looked upon by everyone else as one of the odd ones. This is Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films. Merry Christmas Eve. Today I'm going to be reviewing one... Bleh. Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films, and today I'm going to be... Bleh. Oh god, I am really hungry. I have to... Uh eat an early lunch. Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films. Merry Christmas Eve. Today I'm going to be reviewing a Christmas special that is beloved by many. Blech. I don't like that. Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films. Merry Christmas Eve. Today I'm going to be reviewing a Christmas special that's beloved by many, but looked upon by everyone else as one of the odd ones. This is Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Should probably move that over so I can talk more towards the camera. Move that there. There, that's a little bit better. All right. The movie was made by Rankin Bass Productions, who also made Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, so we know we're in for some awkward animation. The movie begins with a newsreel of children preparing for Christmas. Nail. Yeah, my nail 
was messing with me. My thumbnail. Not thumbnail. Thumbnail, yeah. The movie was made by Rankin Bass Productions, who also made Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So we know we're in for some awkward animation. The movie begins with a newsreel of children preparing for Christmas. The movie was made by Rankin Bass Productions, who also made Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So we know we're in for some awkward animation. The movie begins with a newsreel of children preparing for Christmas. Alright, let me try that again. The movie was made by Rankin Bass Productions, who also made Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So, we know we're in for blah, 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 blah. The movie was made by Rankin Bass Productions, who also made Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So we know we're in for some awkward animation. The movie begins with a newsreel of children preparing for Christmas. Now I have to ask, why does Rankin Bass do this? Now I have to ask, why does Rankin Bass do this? I should probably look at the camera because... Uh... Now I have to ask, why does Rankin Bass do this? That again. Now I have to ask, why does Rankin Bass do this? Those are good. They did this before in Rudolph, too. They did this in Lula. They did this. They did this in Rudolph, too. Why? Do we really need to see that children are getting ready for that? Do we really need to see that children getting ready for Christmas is newsworthy? I keep expecting it to talk about Amon and the Equalists. They did this in Rudolph, too. Why? Do we really need to see that children getting ready for Christmas is newsworthy? Blech. They did this in Rudolph, too. Why? Do we really need to see that children getting ready for Christmas is newsworthy? I keep expecting it to talk about Amon and the Equalists. They did this in Rudolph, too. Why? They did this, too, in Rudolph. Blech. They did this in Rudolph, too. Why? Do we really need to see the children getting ready for Christmas as newsworthy? I keep expecting it to talk about Amon and the Equalists. After that, a creepy mailman drives up and commits mail fraud by opening a bunch of letters to Santa. He then starts tripping balls as the mail talks to him. And while we're at it, let's start counting the number of creepy faces in this movie. After that, a creepy mailman drives up and commits mail fraud by opening a bunch of letters to Santa. He then starts tripping balls as the mail talks to him. And while we're at it, let's just start counting the number of creepy faces in this movie. After that, a creepy mailman drives up and commits mail fraud by opening a bunch of letters to Santa. He then starts tripping balls as the mail talks to him. And while we're at it, let's start counting the number of creepy faces in this movie. Right, one more. After that, a creepy mailman drives up and commits Camilles. After that, a creepy mailman drives up and commits mail fraud by opening a bunch of letters to Santa. He then starts tripping balls as the male talks to him. And while we're at it, let's just start counting the number of creepy faces in this movie. So the mailman decides to tell the story of Santa Claus as we cut to a place called Sombertown, where a child has been left to Burger Meister Meisterburger. The Meisterburger hates babies and orders his law keeper to get rid of him after another creepy face. He makes his way to the orphan asylum. Wait, what? He makes his way to the orphan asylum. What? Something like that, I guess. Oh yeah, it's December fifteenth. If I didn't mention that, but you already saw the thing on the title, or in the, yeah, you saw that. All right, here we go. So the mailman decides to tell the story of Santa. So the mailman decides to tell the story of Santa. 
So the mailman decides to tell the story of Santa Claus as we cut to a place called Sombertown, where a child has been left to Burger Meister Meister Burger. The Burger Meister hates babies and orders his law keepers to get rid of him after another creepy face. Alright, try that again. So the mailman decides to start. So the mailman decides to tell the story of Santa Claus as we cut to a place called Sombertown, where a child has been left to Burger Meister Meister Burger. Burgermeister, I believe, is the German word for mayor. See, I, I just pulled that out of nowhere, honestly. Like, I don't really know that, I just kind of assume. The Burgermeister hates babies and orders his law keeper to... Ugh. The Burgermeister hates babies and orders his law keeper to get rid of him after another creepy face. Nail is driving me crazy. So the mailman decides to tell the story of Santa Claus as we cut to a place called Sombertown, where a child has been left to Burger Meister Meister Burger. The Burger Meister hates babies and orders his law keeper to get rid of him after another creepy face. He makes his way to the orphan asylum. Wait, what? He makes his way to the orphan asylum. Wait, what? He makes his way to the orphan asylum. Wait, what? driving me crazy. Damn. Alright. So the mailman decides to tell the story of Santa Claus as we cut to a place called Sombertown, where a child has been left to Burger Meister Meister Burger. The Burger Meister hates babies and orders his law keeper to get rid of him after another creepy face. He makes his way to the orphan asylum, but wait, what? Alright, here we go. An orphan asylum? You, you mean an orphanage? An orphan asylum? You mean an orphanage? Look, I know asylum is just a word. word. I'm sorry, I think of Arkham Asylum. An orphan asylum? You mean an orphanage? Look, I know asylum is just a word, but I'm sorry, I think of Arkham Asylum. An orphan asylum? You mean an orphanage? Look, I know asylum is just a word, but I think of Arkham Asylum. An orphan asylum? You mean an orphanage? Look, I know asylum is just a word, but I'm sorry, I think of Arkham Asylum. An orphan asylum? You mean an orphanage? Look, I know asylum is just a word, but I'm sorry, I think of uh, an orphan asylum? You mean an orphanage? Look, I know asylum is just a word, but I'm sorry, I think of Arkham Asylum, and that's not really a place you want to send an orphan. An orphan asylum? You mean an orphanage? Look, I know asylum is just a word, but I'm sorry, I think of Arkham Asylum, which is not a good place to send a baby.
Anyway, the sleigh carrying the baby gets loose and whoa! Easy there, guys. That's a lot of animation budget for just a sleigh escaping. The narrator explains that the law keeper didn't go after the sleigh as the mountain is inhabited by an ice warlock that lives in an icy castle. I know, but this did it first. Anyway, the sleigh... Ugh. Anyway, the sleigh carrying the baby gets loose and... Whoa! Easy there, guys. That's a lot of animation budget for a sleigh escaping. The narrator explains that the lawkeeper didn't go after the sleigh because... Ugh. The narrator explains that the lawkeeper didn't go after the sleigh as the mountain is inhabited by an ice warlock that lives in an icy castle. No, but... Oh, boy, that would be cool. No, but oh, I wish it was. No, this came first, unfortunately. No, but oh, I wish it was. I know, I've spent too much of this video, too much of this filming, on this effing nail. But I'm sorry, this is driving me insane. It's basically like splitting in the middle, and I can't get it and get rid of it. All right, stay here. I'll be right back. All right. All right, I'm just going to cheat it. Huh. I win. Nail. Nail. What is it, Lord Guru? I don't have anywhere else to go with that joke, so we'll move on. Um, okay. So we're about right here. So the baby crashes into a tree and is protected from the... Ugh. Just read over this. So the, baby, so the baby crashes into a tree and is protected from the warlock by the fastest animals in the world and is taken to the Kringles, who live just beyond the mountains. So the baby crashes into a tree and is protected from the warlock by the fastest animals in the world and is taken to the Kringles, who lives just beyond the mountain. So the baby crashes into a tree and is protected from the warlock by the fastest animals in the world and is taken to the Kringles, who live just beyond the mountains. So the baby crashes into a tree and is protected... So the baby crashes into a tree, but is protected by the warlock. That. So the baby crashes into a tree, but is protected from the warlock by the fastest animals in the world, and is taken to, to and is taken to the Kringles, who live just beyond the mountains. Uh, I think they prefer the term vertically challenged. Even that sounds bad. So who knows? Uh, I think they prefer the term vertically challenged. Even that sounds kind of bad, so who knows. Um, I believe they prefer the term... Uh, I believe they prefer the term... The... The... Uh, I think they prefer the term vertically challenged. Even that sounds bad, so who knows? Little people. The elves. 
Uh, uh, I think they just prefer small people. Even that sounds bad, so who knows. But you'll soon forget about that line, as the elves are really creepy. I suppose they don't really have creepy faces, but they're just creepy in general. They bring the baby to their queen, Tanta Kringle, who I'm just going to call Miss Kringle. But you'll soon forget about that line, as the elves are really creepy. I suppose they don't really have creepy faces, but they're just creepy in general. They bring the baby to their queen, Tanta Kringle, who I'm just going to call Miss Kringle. But you'll soon forget about that line, as the elves are. Bleh. But you'll soon forget about that line, as the elves are really creepy. I suppose they don't really have creepy faces, but they're just creepy in general. They bring their baby. Bleh. They bring the baby to the queen, Tanta Kringle, who I'm just gonna call Miss Kringle. They begin to teach the baby, now known as Chris, all sorts of things, like creepy faces. Chris is given the history of the, the Chris is given the history of the royal toy makers by Miss Kringle, and I have a question. They begin to teach the baby, now known as Chris, all sorts of things, like creepy faces. Chris is given the history of the royal toy makers by Miss Kringle, and I have a question. Chris is given the history of the royal toy makers by Miss Kringle, and I have a question. Where is this? Like, what country is this? 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 I noticed on my top 12 Christmas specials, two, I get whatever, um, I noticed that on a lot of takes I would say the line and immediately look over, and I need to leave a little bit of space, a little breathing room, basically. Oh, I really should have gotten some water. Uh, you can probably hear it in my voice. I haven't had Pepsi yet either. I didn't bring one in. The Burgermeister in the soldiers' uniforms make this seem like Germany, or at least a Germanic state, but it's never specified. Who is this king that wears glasses and has a curly beard? Is this before Germany was unified, or is this like Prussia? Hell, since they never tell us, this could be Austria for all we know. All right, this... This is basically what happens when you take an entire semester and you learn, like, German unification and stuff like that. Um, you, get a line, you get lines like this in my reviews, so, yeah. Which I'm all through with uh, school for this semester now. That's really nice. I got finished yesterday. So, yeah. The Burgermeister in the soldiers' uniforms make this seem like Germany, or at least a Germanic state, but it's never specified. Who is this king that wears glasses and has a curly beard? Is this before Germany... Bleh. Is this before Germany was unified, or is this like Prussia? Hell, since they never tell us, this could be Austria for all we know. I may actually have to go get some water, because my... my my mouth is drying out, so hold up.
don't want to have to edit the behind the scenes, but this isn't really necessary to, well, the behind the scenes. But it's all right. I don't want to have to really edit it. Too much extra stuff to do. It's really not online. I just don't feel like doing it. All right. Well, luckily that coincided with the clock going off. So yeah. Hey boy. Good boy. Ah. Ooh, that was nice. That was really nice. All right, back to this. Uh, let's go over that line one more time. 24 minutes, holy crap, I better get going. <sighs> the Burgermeister in the soldiers' uniforms make this seem like Germany, or at least a Germanic state, but it's never specified. Who is this king that wears glasses and has a curly beard? Is this before Germany was unified? Like, Prussia? Hell, since they never tell us, this could be Austria for all we know. After creepy face number four, the narrator continues to make up crap to explain Santa's origins. Chris then decides to take the toys to Sombertown and is almost stopped by the Winter Warlock. Oh yeah, I was, I was going to do a Dr. Claw joke in here, but I actually didn't write it into the script, so luckily I remembered. Um, but hold on, we'll get to that in a second. After creepy face number four, the narrator continues to make up crap to explain Santa's origin. Chris then decides to take the toys from Sombertown. Chris then decides to take the toys to Sombertown and is almost stopped by the Winter Warlock. After creepy face number four, the narrator continues to make up crap to explain Santa's origin. Chris then decides to take the 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 the. the after creepy face number four, the narrator continues to make up crap to explain Santa's origins. Chris then decides to take the toys to Sombertown and is almost stopped by the Winter Warlock. Hopefully I'm not talking way too fast. So. After creepy face number four, the narrator continues to make up crap to explain Santa's origin. Chris then decides to take the toys to Sombertown and is almost stopped by the Winter Warlock. All right, here we go. I'll get you next time, Kringle. Next time. <laughs> yeah, Darby's looking at me like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. You're okay, boy. Oh, that took a lot out of my throat just doing that, so hopefully that's good enough. All right, instead of, like, going super deep, we'll just try to just do a deep voice. I'll get you next time, Gringle. Next time. All right, uh, we'll just go with one of those two. Probably the first one, honestly. Ooh. Upon entering Sombertown, Chris sees kids watch... Oh, this is... This is the tricky one I wrote. Upon entering Sombertown, Chris sees kids wa washing some foreshadow. Ah, oh, that's tricky. And discovers that toys have been outlawed by the Burgermeister. This is Miss Jessica, who really doesn't have a position of authority, but kind of acts like she does. Upon entering Sombertown, Chris sees kids wash, wa oh, washing. I keep, because I, wa I instinctually want to say watching, but no. Upon entering Sombertown, Chris sees kids. Upon entering Sombertown, Chris sees kids washing some foreshadow and discovers that the toys have. Bleh. Upon entering Sombertown, Chris sees kids washing some foreshadow and discovers that toys have been outlawed by the Burgermeister. This is Miss Jessica, 
who really doesn't have a position of authority, but kind of acts like she does. Upon entering Sombertown, Chris sees kids washing some foreshadow and discovers that toys have been outlawed by the Burgermeister. This is Miss Jessica, who really doesn't have a position of authority, but kind of acts like she does. Upon entering Sombertown, Chris sees kids washing some foreshadow and discovers that toys have been outlawed by the Burgermeister. This is Miss Jessica, who really doesn't have a position of authority, but everyone kind of treats her like she does. Ah! Oh yeah, I forgot. Started doing another line, I was like, wait a second, that clock is going off, I need to stop. Alright, now that I'm filming, I'm in a much better mood. I was a little grumpy before I started filming, but it's over now. Ah! Nah! Ah! Okay. There are creepy faces from the limitations of stop motion, and then there's Chris's eyeballs growing for no reason. Okay, there's creepy... Okay, there's creepy faces due to the limitations of stop motion, and then there's Chris's eyeballs growing for no reason. Okay, the... Okay, there are creepy faces because of limitations of stop motion, but... Okay, there are... Okay, there are creepy faces due to the limitations of stop motion, and then there's Chris's eyes growing for no reason. I almost said bulging, but... Uh. Okay. There are creepy faces due to limitations of stop motion, and then there's Chris's eyeballs growing for no reason. Someone in the production team actually made this decision. Someone in the production team made the decision for that to happen. Oh yeah, and then here comes my joke. So basically, in the film, Chris gives Jessica a China doll, and it's like, it's the thing I always wanted. And I'm going to cut to the Santa Claus where Neil is like, I was three. I wanted an Oscar my weenie whistle or something like that. It's like, Christmas came, no weenie whistle. That's when I stopped believing in Santa. So, just a fun little joke. Ah. So after another weird song, Chris encounters the Burgermeister, who is trying to arrest children. What's with Rankin Bass and nonconformity? This is the same plot as Rudolph. Why do they keep doing this? Is this a way of showing the, rev the rise of revisionism and Nazism in Germany? Ah, I'm probably overthinking it. I, I hope that joke works. I should probably back up, yeah. If, if I get too close to the light kind of distorts. So after another weird song, Chris encounters the Burgermeister, who is trying to arrest children. Okay, what's with Rankin Bass and nonconformity? This is the same plot as Rudolph. Why do they keep doing this? Is this a way of showing the rise of revisionism and Nazism in Germany? I mean, think about it. Nah, I'm probably overthinking it. See, I, I was about to like try to go into more about that, but nah. Might even just take that out altogether. Yeah. So after another weird song, Chris encounters the Burgermeister, who is trying to arrest children. Okay, what's with Rankin Bass and nonconformity? This is the same plot as Rudolph. Why do they keep doing this? The Burgermeister orders the troops to arrest Chris, and Chris escapes because he's played a lot of Assassin's Creed. He loses the troops in the woods and is captured by the Winter Warlock. 
Chris asks Winter if he could be let go long enough to give him a present. This causes a toilet flushing sound effect that melts the icy exterior of Mr. Warlock. And a creepy face number seven. A creepy. And creepy face number seven. Not only that, but we get a creepy laugh, too. The Burgermeister orders the troops to arrest Chris, and Chris escapes. The Burgermeister orders the troops to arrest Chris, but he escapes because he's played a lot of Assassin's Creed. He loses the troops in the woods and is captured by the Winter Warlock. Chris asks Winter if he could be let go long enough to give him a present. This causes a toilet flushing sound effect that melts the icy exterior of Mr. Warlock. And creepy face number seven. Not only that, but we get a creepy laugh, too. I actually didn't put in the time code for that creepy face. Well, luckily I know the scene, so. Alright, moving on. Yeah, 34 minutes, we really gotta get going. Chris then sings a song about how easy it is to be a good person. And I just have to say it. Mickey Rooney as Chris is the best part of the movie. This voice is perfect. It's the right amount of goodness and sincerity that fits the role of a young Santa Claus. And is... Oh. And this is most highlighted in this song. That's what I'm supposed to say. Chris then sings a song about how easy it is to be a good person, and I have to say it, Mickey Rooney as Chris is the best part of the movie. This voice is perfect. It's the right amount of goodness and sincerity that fits the role of young Santa Claus and is most highlighted in this song. Right. Chris then sings a song about how easy it is to be a good person and, I have to say it, Mickey Rooney as Chris is the best part of the movie. The voice is perfect. It's the right amount of goodness and sincerity that fits the role of a young Santa Claus. And is, bleh, and is most highlighted in this song. Winter shows Chris his magic by making a crystal snowball that can show him people, and it shows the. Winter shows Chris his magic by by making Winter shows Chris his magic by making a crystal snowball that can show him people and ha and and it shows Jessica in the woods looking for Chris. Winter shows Chris his magic by making a crystal snowball that can show him people, and it shows Jessica in the woods looking for Chris. Blech. Winter shows Chris his magic by making a crystal snowball that can show him people. It... Nah. Winter shows Chris his magic by making a crystal snowball that can show him people. Excuse me. Winter shows Chris's magic by making a crystal snowball that can show him people. It shows that Jessica's looking in the, 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 the. Winter shows Chris his magic by making a crystal snowball that can show him people, and it shows Jessica in the woods looking for Chris. So Chris makes a list of all the kids and determines which ones are naughty and which ones are nice. So Chris makes a list of all the kids and determines which ones are naughty and which ones are nice. So Chris makes a list of all the kids and determines which ones are naughty and which ones are nice. Um, that's kind of your thing. If you can't dec- Uh, buddy, if you can't decide out of maybe 50 kids, how are you supposed to decide out of the entire world? Uh, buddy, if you can't decide out of 50 kids, how are you supposed to- Make that the thumbnail of this behind the scenes. All right, moving on. Mm. 
uh, buddy, if you can't determine out of maybe 50 kids, how are you supposed to determine out of the entire world? Uh, buddy, that's kind of your thing. If you can't determine out of maybe 50 kids, how are you supposed to determine out of the entire world? Uh, buddy, this is kind of your thing. Look, if you can't decide out of maybe 50 kids, how are you supposed to decide out of the entire world? Um... I am actually going to start a new recording so that this doesn't just shut off randomly, so one second. And I'm back! It's literally three seconds later. So, three, two, one. Three, two, one. And we're synced again. Chris delivers toys to the children at night, and the Burgermeister decrees that all doors and windows will be locked at night. Chris delivers the toys to the... Chris delivers toys to the children at night, and the Burgermeister decrees that all the doors and windows will be locked. The next night, Chris decides to... Ugh. Chris delivers toys to the children at night, and the Burgermeister decrees that all doors and windows will be locked. The next... He's really gonna snore while I'm filming. Chris delivers toys to the children at night, and the Burgermeister decrees that all doors and windows will be locked. The next night, Chris decides... Chris delivers all the toys... Chris delivers toys to the children at night, and the Burgermeister decrees that all doors and windows will be locked. The next night, Chris gets the idea to go down the chimneys to deliver the presents. The next night, Chris gets the idea to go down the chimneys to deliver the presents. Okay, this kid sounds like he's been truly enlightened. Jeez, this kid sounds like he's really been enlightened. Either that, or he's had a little too much eggnog. This kid sounds like he's been truly enlightened. Of course, with that acting, you'll suspect he had too much eggnog. This kid sounds like he's truly enlightened. Either that, or he's had a little too much eggnog. This kid sounds like he's been truly enlightened. Of course, with that kind of performance, it sounds like he's had a little too much eggnog. Wow, this kid sounds like he's been truly enlightened. Of course, with that kind of performance, it sounds like he's had a little too much eggnog. Wow, this kid sounds like he's been truly enlightened. Of course, with that kind of performance, he sounds like he's had a little too much eggnog. <sighs> so the Burgermeister begins to inspect the houses for toys, but comes up empty-handed as the toys were placed in the stockings. When the Burgermeister sees that there are even more toys, he sets up a trap to arrest Chris as the law keeper arrests everyone else. Except for Jessica, for some reason. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like Joey Wheeler on the Abridge series. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about this guy. So the Burgermeister begins to inspect the houses for toys, but comes up empty. So the Burgermeister begins to inspect the houses for toys, but comes up empty-handed as the toys were placed in the stockings. When the Burgermeister sees that there are even more toys, he sets up a trap to arrest Chris as the lawkeeper arrests everyone else, except for Jessica, for some reason.
Jessica tries to beg for Chris's freedom, but it doesn't work. She then sings a song while tripping balls. After that, she goes to Winter to see if he has any magic left. Flying reindeer apparently break them out. Some. Flying reindeer apparently break them out. Somehow, and decide to leave. Flying reindeer apparently break them out. Somehow, and they decide to leave to find a safer place to live. Chris grows a beard to keep himself in disguise, and Miss Kringle suggests that he uses his birth name, Claus, as an alias. Although, because it's German, it would be Klaus, but whatever. Jessica tries to beg for Chris's freedom, but it doesn't work. She then sings a song while tripping balls. After that, she goes to Winter to see if he has any magic left. Flying reindeer apparently break them out, somehow, and they decide to leave for a safer place to live. Chris grows a beard and... Bleh. Flying reindeer apparently break them out somehow. Flying reindeer somehow break them out, and they decide to leave to find a safer place to live. Chris grows a beard to keep himself in disguise, and Miss Kringle suggests that he uses suggests that he uses his birth name Claus as an alias. Although because it's German, it would be Klaus, but whatever. So the narrator keeps up making. So the narrator keeps making up shit to explain. Alright. So the narrator keeps making up shit to try to explain Santa like he's Kirk Cameron as the gang builds a new house in the North Pole. But wait, what about the Burgermeister? What's the climax of this film gonna be? So the narrator keeps making up shit to try to explain Santa like he's Kirk Cameron as the gang. <sighs> yeah. So the narrator keeps making up shit to try to explain Santa like he's Kirk Cameron as the gang builds a new house in the North Pole. But wait, what about the Burgermeister? What is the climax of this film going to be? But wait, what about the Burgermeister? But wait, what about the Burgermeister? Isn't he still a problem? What is the climax of this film going to be? What? They just died out? They just died out? Okay, I wasn't expecting like this grand final battle between Chris and, uh, and the Burgermeister, but that's it? No final confrontation where maybe the Burgermeister is redeemed? Nothing? They just died out? Alright. Okay, it's not... Glasses. Okay, it's not like I was expecting some grand final battle between Chris and the Burgermeister, but that's it? There's no final confrontation where maybe the Burgermeister is redeemed? Nothing? This is really it? This is the most anticlimactic ending I've ever seen! It just died out. That's the point. That's the, point. That's the line I missed. Okay, it's not like I was expecting some grand epic battle between Chris and the Burgermeister, but that's it? Ah. Okay, I wasn't expecting like a big final battle between Chris and uh, the Burgermeister. Ah. We're almost done, we're almost done. Okay, I wasn't expecting some grand epic battle between Chris and the Burgermeister, but that's it? No final confrontation where maybe the Burgermeister is redeemed? They just died off? That's the most anticlimactic ending I've ever seen! Alright. What's right? You didn't say anything! All you said was he was good. Why does that count as an explanation for why he's called Santa? Ugh, it's almost over. So Santa limits his journeys to once a year and decides to go out on the night of Christmas Eve. 
We cut back to the narrator as the male thanks him for his story, and he rides off while almost running over children. <sighs> What's right? You didn't say anything. All you said was he was good. Why does that count as an explanation for why he's called Santa? Ugh, it's almost over, so Santa limits his journeys to once a year and decides to go out on the night of Christmas Eve. We cut back to the narrator as the male thanks him for his story and he rides off while almost running over children. I'm gonna try that again. What's right? You didn't say anything. All you said was he was good. Why does that count as an explanation for why he's called Santa? Uh, it's almost over, so Santa limits his journeys to once a year and decides to go out on the night of Christmas Eve. We then come back to the narrator as the male thanks him for his story and he rides off while almost running over children. The end. What's right? You didn't say anything. All you said was he was good. Why does that count as an explanation for why he's called Santa? Ugh, it's almost over. So Santa... Ugh, it's almost over. So Santa limits his journeys to once a year and decides to go out on the night of Christmas Eve. We cut back to the narrator as the male thanks him for his story and he rides off into the sunset while almost running over children. The end. And that was Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Is it bad? No, it's perfectly harmless. But it's such an odd movie that it might... It's perfectly harmless. But it's such an odd movie that, I'm... that I think anyone could really enjoy it. I know I'll watch it every Christmas and make jokes all the way. Well, if you guys don't mind, I've got something I need to go do. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films. Merry Christmas. And that was Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Is it bad? Not really. It's perfectly harmless. It's just odd. But honestly, I can recommend how odd it is. I know that every Christmas I'm going to be watching this because I can make jokes all the way. We're going to start sober. And that was Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Is it bad? No. It's perfectly harmless. It's just odd. But strangely, I recommend you watch this for how weird it is. I know that I'm going to watch this every Christmas so that I can make jokes all the way. Well, if you guys don't mind, there's something I gotta go do. Until then, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films. Merry Christmas. i start over because I messed up. And I also have to walk away now, so... Try moving that a little bit. And that was Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Is it bad? No. It's perfectly harmless. It's just odd. Like, really odd. And honestly, I'd recommend you watch it. Even if you don't think it's good. Yeah. And that was Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Is it bad? No, it's perfectly harmless. It's just really odd. But in a strange way, I would recommend you watch it. Because if you're like me, this will become a new Christmas tradition to make jokes all the way. All right. Try that again. And that was Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Is it bad? No, it's just odd. Really, really odd. But if you're like me, you really enjoy the oddness of it. And every Christmas, you're going to pop it in and make some jokes. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films. Merry Christmas. I forgot another fucking line. Ah! I'm so close to being done. And that was Santa Claus's Coming to Town. Is it bad? No. It's just odd. But if you're like me, and that was Santa Claus is coming to town. Is it good? Ah, is it good? Darn it. And that was Santa Claus is coming to town. Is it bad? No, 
It's just... Ah. Ah. And that was Santa Claus's coming to town. Is it bad? No, it's perfectly harmless. It's just... odd. But if you're like me, you'll really enjoy how odd it is. And you'll pop it in every Christmas to make some jokes. Well, if you guys don't mind, there's something I gotta go do. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films. Merry Christmas. I'm gonna do that one more time so that I can have a safety take. And that was Santa Claus's... And that was Santa Claus is coming to town. Is it bad? No, it's perfectly harmless. It's just odd. Really odd. But if you're like me, you really enjoy that oddness. And you'll pop it in every Christmas just to have some jokes. Well, if you guys don't mind, there's something I gotta go do. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films. Merry Christmas. Okay, I'm still not done. There's two shots I need to get for this video. The shot of, well, uh, yeah, I guess just two shots. One of me walking away, one of me walking past the flash helmet, so yeah. So let's get to those. Okay, I, uh, let's do a sync test. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Nice. Okay. We're just gonna get a couple shots, basically. Hmm. Might need shot like over here. So if I do a shot like this, I'm basically, I'm trying to cheat the camera a little bit. So um, I might just like walk by here, and then we'll walk over there, and then that'll be it. So, did I have you one out? I can let you out, boy. Go on out, big boy. All right. Um, here. We should actually, oop, not gonna end this stuff. Move this back so you can get more of me over here. So if I just go, where's off screen? So right here. Move this, all right. So if I'm like right here, and I just go, cool, where's off screen over here? All right, here, we can work with that. All right. I'm actually going to try to suck in my gut. Ow! Ooh, I just stepped on something. All right. Try that again. Okay. Hopefully that works. Now we need a shot for me with the helmet. So yeah, so basically I'm cheating this. So now I'm going to be going across here even though that's not really where I was. So, so if I walk across here, yeah, you'll be able to see me. And you can see the helmet right there. So if I just go, all right, we're gonna try that again. I'm not on camera. Where is off 
off screen over here, uh, right about here. All right. Try that one last time. Turn it a bit that way. Don't know if that'll help or not. Okay, cool. Um, hmm. See, I don't know. I'm kind of winging it on how I'm doing this shot. So I don't know, maybe I need to kind of do it differently, like maybe we put the camera over there closer so you can see the helmet and have me walk by. Let's try that, so taking you guys for a ride. Oh yeah, I still need the shot of the ornament for the tree. We'll go ahead and move this. We'll try to move some things out of the way. Ooh, I like that. Nice. Uh, it says happy birthday in the background. Let me actually take that down. I guess if I just go off screen like this, then it's kind of, yeah, that can work. It's going to cut off a little bit of my head, but that's all right. Again. One more for good measure. Okay, then. I think we got that. So I guess, honestly, the last thing would be the shot of the ornament. So let's just get that, I guess. Hopefully this is a good shot. I can't even see it. All right, we're just going to have to assume that it looked good. So, that's everything, actually. That's every shot I need. So, yeah, um, that's the end of this behind the scenes. Thank you all for watching. And, um, yeah, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys on another video. Here's some end cards.